Have you ever finished rendering your scene and thought, hmm, I really wish the sunlight was a bit brighter? Or maybe, dang, the light from that lantern is a lot more yellow than I thought it was. When this happens, normally you'd have to go back into the 3D scene, change the lighting, re-render the whole thing and just hope that the lighting is better this time. When you're using cycles or a similar ray tracing render engine, this can often take quite a while. Very annoying. In a lot of cases, you can use the render preview mode in the 3D viewport to get a good idea of how the render will look, but viewport previews can be very slow. This is particularly true in complex scenes, especially when you don't have a high-end GPU, or in animated shots where the lighting conditions might change over the course of the shot, making a preview of one frame of limited use. What if there was a way you could change the lighting without needing to re-render at all? Well, with the use of light groups, you can make that sunlight brighter and the lantern light less yellow in seconds without having to re-render anything. Let me show you how. This tutorial is possible thanks to my Master Compositing in Blender course, your all-in-one masterclass for enhancing your renders and creating stunning VFX shots. More on that later. First things first, I need a project with which to demonstrate. And here's one I prepared earlier. All of the assets in this scene were free from a variety of websites, including Polyhaven, Production Crate, CG Trader and Sketchfab. So if you want to make a scene like it to try this out for yourself, I'd highly recommend taking a look at those sites. All links to the assets used in this scene can be found in the video description. We have three light sources, and I'll just turn them off quickly so we can easily see what they add to the scene. Two are fairly obviously the lantern and the sunlight, but we also have an HDRI providing some general ambience and reflections. Now ordinarily when we would render this scene, all of the lights are rendered together and the resulting image is the combination of all of those lights and how they affect the scene, which is what we're seeing here. This means that once it's rendered, there's not much we can do to change how things look, other than color grading the scene as a whole, which often doesn't give the best results, or painstakingly masking areas of the image, which is tedious and no fun for anybody. What light groups allow us to do is render lights separately, and that allows us to grade those separated lights in the compositing stage. And the best part is that because this is done in compositing, we don't need to re-render at all, making the process of adjusting the lighting very, very quick. Sounds exciting, right? Let's start by going through the easy process of setting up those light groups. This has two steps, creating the light groups and assigning lights to those groups. To create the light groups, we go into the View Layers tab of the Properties panel and under Passes, we have this section helpfully labeled Light Groups. Here we just click the little plus button on the right and ta-da, we have a new light group. That's it, step one complete. Having just one light group is often a bit pointless though. And in this scene, we have those three light sources that I want to separate out. So I'll create two more. To easily identify which lights belong to each group, I'll rename them by double clicking on the name and calling them Sun, Lantern and Environment. Now that our light groups have been created, we'll need to assign lights to them, or they'll just render out as black images, which would make the whole process a little bit redundant. So let's start with the sunlight. I'll just select that one in the viewport or by coming up to the outliner and selecting it there. For a light object, such as a point, area, spot or sunlight, we can assign the light to a group in the Object tab of the Properties panel. Under Shading, we have this Light Group section. To assign the selected light to a group, just click on the text box here, and a list of available light groups will appear below. As this is our sunlight, I'll select Sun, and that's all done. Ooh, unintentional rhyme. Our sunlight will now also render in an entirely separate pass, which we'll see soon. Before we get to that though, let's assign our other lights. For the lantern, we just repeat the same process. Select the light object that we want, in this case the lantern, then in that same object light group section, choose the group that you want to assign it to. In this case, I'll choose lantern. And that one's done as well. If you want to assign multiple lights to a single light group at once, you can hold Alt when you select the light group, and all of the selected objects will be assigned to the light group you chose. For our HDRI, it's an environment light, not a light object, and thus we will find the light group section for that in the World tab of the Properties panel under Settings. From here, it's the same as the other two lights. This time I'll select Environment. There! Now all of our light groups are set up and the lights are all assigned. So all that's left to do is rendering the image. So I'll just hit F12 or come up to the Render menu and select Render Image. This tutorial is brought to you by my Master Compositing in Blender course. If you'd like to learn more about compositing and what it can do for you, consider checking it out. We go through how to utilize advanced render passes, add CG objects to your footage with camera tracking, greatly enhance your renders in just a few minutes, give your workflow a ridiculous amount of flexibility, and so much more. 
Everything from glow and grain right up to building whole animated scenes from just a few still images, all in one course, all within Blender, without any paid add-ons. If that sounds like something that interests you, head over to cgboost.com slash compositing and check it out for yourself. Now back to light groups. Once the render's done, to start making use of our light groups, let's go to the compositing workspace by heading up here and selecting compositing from the workspace tabs. If you don't have compositing here, you can find it by clicking this little plus icon and then selecting general, compositing. I'm just going to make a couple of quick changes to the default layout, but you can leave it as it is if you prefer. I'll hover over the corner of the compositing nodes window so that the cursor changes to a little plus icon, then click and drag down to create a second section here. I'll change this one to an image editor, and then change the image we're viewing to the viewer node. I'll make sure backdrop is disabled in the compositing nodes section, and now we can more easily move the image around and zoom in and out with the mouse. We also have the benefit of being able to hold down right click on the image and see a whole range of data about the pixels in that image, in particular the color values over here. Whether or not you use this layout, make sure use nodes is enabled or nothing we do in the compositor will actually do anything. Once you're all set up, have a look at the render layers node. Normally it would just have the image and alpha outputs, but because we created our light groups, we now have outputs for each of those as well. If you connect a viewer node to the various outputs, you can see the result of our light group passes. If you're using the free Node Wrangler add-on that comes with Blender, you can press Control Shift and left click on a node to view the output. You can hold Control Shift and click again to switch to the next output. It will even create a viewer node if you don't already have one, which is quite handy. We have the regular image output, which is all of the lights together, but we also have each of the lights rendered individually without the influence of the other light sources, helpfully labeled with the light group names. The benefit is that we can now grade our lights individually. Before we do that, let's combine our light groups to create the original render. To do this, create a mix node by accessing the add menu with shift A, or head up to the top of the node graph window and access the add menu from there. Then select color, mix, mix color. Change the mix node to add, then connect the sun and lantern light group outputs to the node. Duplicate the add node, Add the first add node's output to the top input and the environment light to the bottom input. Now all of our lights are combined together and if you look between the output of the second add node and the image output of the render layers node, they should look exactly the same. You can add more add nodes if you have more than just three light groups by the way. Just repeat what we did for this add node here for each other light group that you have and they should combine properly. This might seem like a lot of work to get the same result, but now we can grade the lights and see the changes take immediate effect without having to re-render. For example, we can extinguish the lantern light by adding a color correction node to the lantern light group's output and setting the master gain to zero. Maybe we want this to be a night scene instead. Let's restore the lantern light by deleting the color correction node with Control delete then make a new color correction node for the environment light and look at the output of that. I'll set the master saturation to 0.5 and drop the master gain to about 0.4 to give it the approximate feeling of a room at night with most of the lights off. Now I'll head up to the sunlight and go through the process of turning it into moonlight. First I'll start with yet another color correction node, setting the master saturation to zero and the master gain to about 0.2. That's a pretty good light level, but now I'd like to give it a hint of blue to sell the moonlight effect. So I'll create another mix node set the mode to multiply, and adjust the color for the second input to be a bit more on the blue side. This will have the effect of shifting the color values of the top input to have a bit of a blue tint. I am simplifying a bit, but that's essentially what it's doing. With that, it now looks like convincing moonlight. If we look at the result of the second add node now and the combination of all of our light sources, the scene has been transformed into a nighttime scene, all without having to re-render the 3D scene. You can do anything you like to the lights in this way, such as making the lantern green, making the sunlight red, or even just balancing the lights a little bit so that you're happy with how they interact with each other. By hovering over a value on one of the nodes and pressing I, you can add keyframes to the various values on the nodes, and then use this to animate a light turning on or off, change the intensity of lights over time, or have the lights change color at a pivotal moment in your scene, all without needing to re-render if you change your mind about the timing or intensity of the effect. Once you're happy with how the lights look, we can go ahead and add any other compositing effects you might like to add to the scene, such as glow, 
lens distortion, aberration, vignette, and film grain to take the scene to that final level of polish. We cover all of these effects in my compositing course, but they are a few videos all on their own, so we won't get into them here. If you look at the render before and after the changes we've made, I'm sure we can all agree that those few minutes of work massively improved the look of the render, and all without having to re-render anything at all. You should now have the capacity to change your lighting at will, without any need to re-render your scene. This is routinely used by experienced artists and film studios to make rapid improvements to a scene and even entirely shift the atmosphere of the resulting image. It's something that I use on every project and now, so can you. Don't forget to check out the Master Compositing in Blender course for more exciting ways to improve and adjust your renders, including a more in-depth look at the techniques shown in this video, and be sure to subscribe for more useful tips to improve your workflow.